Alright, so I've been trying to figure out how to use Microsoft Graph API in Python to automate different Office applications such as OneNote, ToDo App, OneDrive, and Outlook for the past eight months, and maybe even longer. And unfortunately, the official documentation didn't help very much, and most of the tutorials focus on building web application using Flask or Django. And until recently, I was able to finally figure out a very stable workflow that I'm pretty satisfied with connecting to Microsoft Graph API to automate different Office applications. All right, so if you don't know what Microsoft Graph API is, if we go to the overview page, Microsoft Graph API is a RESTful web API that enables you to access Microsoft Cloud services. And if you go to the overview page, uh, these are some of the information that you can take a look. And unfortunately, uh, like I said, the documentation isn't very well organized. So I was never able to figure out how to connect to Microsoft Graph API in Python until now. All right, so first one to go to address portal. And if you don't have an account, get an account and it's free. On the top one to search for app registration. Oh, so here me uh, cover the agenda first. All right, so these are the things I want to cover in this video. So the first one we're going to cover is, I'm going to show you how to register an app. Then we're going to install the Azure Python client library. And I'll show you two different methods to authenticate. The first method is going to be uh, using the authorization code. For method number two, we are going to acquire the access token by logging to our account. And this method is useful when you want to build an application that you want to distribute to a third party. And this one is more for uh, personal projects. All right, so here let's go into app registrations page. I'm going to uh, show you everything from scratch. All right, so here first we're going to create a new app. So we're going to click on new registration. And let's call this uh, Python Graph API demo. And from the supporter account types, I'm going to choose the third option because it seems like the third option will gives you the most flexibility to connect to the API. All right, so here we need to uh, specify the redirect URI. And I'm going to choose web. And for this, I'm going to simply uh, insert a local host URI. And the URI can be anything. It doesn't matter if the page is a live page or it's a, a page that does not exist. Next, we're going to register the app. All right, so we have uh, created the app. If we look at the overview page or the summary page, we have different IDs. Now I want to go into my Python script and create a blank Python script and name anything you want. For this demo, I'm going to name my script graph API demo.py. All right, so here I'm going to create a variable called uh, let's do client secret. And we don't have the secret yet. That's okay. We're going to require the client secret later. All right, so here uh, let's create the variable to store the application ID or the client ID. And it's going to be this ID right here. Now I'll go back to the app page. On the left hand side, we have uh, several different options. Click on certificates and secrets. And we're going to generate a new secret. We only need a secret for method number one. For method number two, we're going to uh, prompt the users to log in to acquire the access token. So essentially, uh, we just need to generate the access token to be able to connect to Microsoft Graph API. All right, so here let me create my secret first. I'm going to set the expiration uh, time period. So let's do uh, 24 months and add. All right, so here we have two different sets of values. One is secret ID, 
and the other one is secret value. We only need the value. So here, let me copy the value. And I'll save the value to client secret variable. And let me increase the font size. All right, so let's go into Graph Explorer. So this is the platform where you can uh, test out the API. On the left hand side are different products that you can uh, access using Graph API. So here we have OneNote, OneDrive, Microsoft To Do App, Outlook Service. All right, so here uh, if I simply select one of the service or method I want to I want to execute, let's do uh, my profile. I'm going to click on Git, and this is going to generate the uh, endpoint URL for me. I'm going to run the query. And here's the JSON output that I expect to see when I make the request to this endpoint. All right, so let's see. All right, so the next step is we need to uh, enable the scopes. And let me add that here. Enable scopes. So before you can connect into any Office application service, we need to enable the scope. And if we go to, let's see, I forgot the option. Let me take a look. Okay, so if you go to API permissions, and right now we have user that read permission. And this permission will allow my program or this app to access my account's uh, profile information. And if I want to access different application, such as I'll look at OneDrive, then I want to go to the product, and it will be on the Microsoft Graph uh, product. And here we have two different uh, permissions set. I'm going to click on delegate permissions, and these are all the uh, scopes associated to all the uh, Graph API products. And for now, I'm going to just give you a quick uh, demo on some of the uh, scopes. All right, so if you want to use uh, Outlook, it's an Outlook, let's do notes. So this is going to be the scopes associated to uh, OneNote's application. And if you want to allow the app to access to your OneNote's uh, profile or the content, then we need to enable some of the uh, OneNote scopes. And for now, I'm going to keep things simple. I'm only going to enable the default uh, scope, which is my profile. And this is the endpoint. All right, so let's see. So we're done with item number one and item number two. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, install the Python package for Microsoft Azure. Now launch your terminal, and I'm using VS Code. And let me change my environment to Azure Cloud. All right, so to install the Azure Python package, you want to use the command pip install msal. And I already have the package installed. Now we're going to import the library. On the top, we can say import msal. And from msal, I'm going to import the public client application class. So this class is used when we want to construct an application instance. In this case, it will be Python Graph API demo application instance. All right, so this word seems to get really tricky because uh, the documentation then tells some of the endpoint URL that we need to use. And they're actually quite many. Actually, not many. They're actually just a couple, but it was pretty confusing for me to figure out. All right, so here we're going to grab uh, the endpoint or the base URL from Graph Explorer's uh, page. And the permanent link right here, which is this uh, portion right here, it's going to represent the service name that you want to access. So for example, 
if I want to uh, connect to my Excel web application, if I click on the get request, and it's going to be the uh, endpoint that I need to provide to access my Excel file on the web. I guess uh, the endpoint is pretty similar. All right, so let's go back. Now I'm going to create another variable. I'll call the variable endpoint. And it's going to be, oh, here. Let's call this base URL. And the endpoint is going to be base URL plus the permanent link. Then we need to create a dictionary. I'll name the dictionary scopes. So for instance, if I go into my app's products page, and currently, the only scope that I have available for this app to access is the user.read scope. If I click on add a permission, Microsoft Graph API, delegated permissions. Now let's say I want to access, uh, let's take a look, because they are quite many. It should be on the user. Okay, so right here. So under the user group, check this uh, user.export.o scope to allow the app to be able to export my uh, user's account's information. And this is going to be the scope value. So I'm going to copy the scope and I'll assign that to my scopes list. And if I need to add additional scopes, I can simply copy paste the scope value and then send the scope to the scopes list. All right, so going back to the top, I need to create several URLs. The first one is going to be the authority URL. And this is the URL that we need to use to log in to acquire the access token. And the address is going to be HTTPS login dot Microsoft online dot com slash consumers slash okay so at this point we have all the uh, required information to access to Microsoft Graph API in Python. All right so it's going to be method number one. authentication with authorization code. So here I'm going to insert the MSL library and I want to insert this class called confidential client application. And I'll name the output as client instance. In the class, we need to supply the client ID and it's going to be the application ID. Then we need to provide the client secret value. And it should be client credential. This equals to client secret. Oh, let me go back to the top. I want to import the web browser module. Then we need to provide the authority URL to the authority URL parameter. All right, so here let me go ahead and run this code block. Oh, this should be authority. All right, so we have created the client instance. If I print the object type, it's a confidential client application object. Before we can acquire the access token, here if we go back to the Graph Explorer's uh, platform, if we click on access token, 
and here's the access token generated by uh, the platform itself. And if we go to request headers or respond headers, and unfortunately this information doesn't help us to figure out how to connect to the API itself. So here's what we need to do. We need to reference client instance object. Then we want to use the get authorization request URL method. And we'll provide the scopes. And I'll name the outputs authorization request URL. If I run this statement, and if I print the authorization request URL variable, it's going to give us a URL that we need to open to acquire the authorization code. So here, let me use the web browser module that open. And I want to supply the URL. And I want to open the browser in a new window. Now, if I run this line here, oh, I guess I just open the uh, page on the same uh, browser. That's okay. All right, so it's going to prompt me to grant the permissions to the app. Now click on yes. And it's going to redirect the page to the local host URL that I specify when I register my app. And if we look at the end, so here we have a piece of code. And it's the authorization code that I was referring to. And copy the code. I'm going to store the code in a variable code, authorization code. Now we can take uh, this code and to request the uh, access token. And let's name this as access token. So from the client instance option, I want to insert the acquire token by authorization code. Inside the method, we need to supply the code to the code parameter. Then we need to supply the scopes to the scopes parameter. And if I run this code block, oh, here, let me create the code first. And if I print the access token from the output, we should now see the access token is now generated. The access token is going to expire in one hour. And after that, I just need to uh, re-request the access token. Now to make the API code to acquire my profile's information. Here I'm going to create my headers. And it's going to be authorization and the value is going to be bear space plus the access token. Oh, uh, right, so because I forgot, this is actually a dictionary, not the token ID itself. So I'm going to create another variable. Let's call this access token ID. And from access token, I want to reference the access token key. And this will be access token ID. All right, so here let's make a request call to get my profile information. So here let me uh, import the requests library. From the requests library, I want to make a get request. And the endpoint is going to be here. Let me move the endpoint here. It's going to be the base URL plus the permanent link. Now, if I go ahead and create the response object, 
Oh, headers is not created. Let me go ahead and uh, create the headers. If I go ahead and create the response option, if I print the response option, we now have the status code 200. If I print the JSON option, and here's my profile information, which is going to be identical to uh, this information right here, generated by Microsoft Graph's uh, platform. All right, so that's method number one. And method number two is logging to acquire access token. So the difference between this method and the first method is this step is skip. We're going to log into our account to get the access ID. So let me terminate this session. And that will come out method number one. Actually, let's do this. I'll create another uh, script. And I'll name this as demo2.py. Now I'll copy the script over, except that I'm going to delete method, method number one. All right, so here, uh, let me go ahead and create an instance of the public client application object. All right, so here we need to provide the application ID. in the authorization URL to the authority parameter. And I'll run this code block to create my app object. From the app object, this uh, method code get accounts. And if the application is already authenticated, then it's going to return uh, the account information that it can retrieve to acquire the access token that, that was generated before. But right now I haven't authenticated my account yet. So here, uh, let me go ahead and uh, finish this uh, statement here. I'll name the output's accounts. And here I'm going to say, if accounts is not empty, Then I can acquire the access token using the acquire token silence method. And we just need to provide the scopes and the accounts uh, object. And assuming that it's always going to be the first account, since there can be uh, multiple account on the same PC. So this will be up to you to figure out how you want to uh, work the logic. Or if you want, we can skip uh, this step, which means that every time uh, when we authenticate, we just need to prompt the user to log in. And I know uh, this is a little bit more troublesome, but it's more secure that way. All right, so we're going to initial the flow, and which is to from the users to login. And from the app object, we want to insert the initiate device flow method. And we need to provide the scopes. And we go ahead and create the flow object. Now if I print the flow object, it's going to give us, let's see, I'm getting an error in valid client. Why well, so I know why. Here, let's go back to the app itself. All right, so this one more thing that we need to uh we need to set. Okay, if you go back to the app's uh dashboard. Go to authentication. And here we want to enable allow public client flow. 
So this will allow uh, a third party user to be able to use the application. All right, so here let me try again. I'll recreate the flow after. And let me terminate this session. And I forgot to save the setting. All right, so let's go back. Okay, so here uh, I'm getting here. Public client should not process credential. All right, so let me do this. I'm going to pause the video. Meanwhile, let me troubleshoot this issue real quick. So I figured out the issue and it was a pretty uh, silly mistake. All right, so here, uh, let me take out the module name. So inside the public client app application class, I forgot to uh, specify the parameter name. And this will be authority. Now let me go ahead and uh, rerun this code block. And I'm going to create the flow object. And if I print the flow object, we now have a user code in the device code. So here, uh, if we look at the dictionary, there's a key code verification URI. Now I'm going to insert the web browser's library. And I want to open the link. So from the full object, I want to reference the verification URI link. Oh, this should be open. Right, so it's going to prompt us to insert uh, a code. And the code is going to be located. So if we reference the full object, and if we reference the message key, and let's call this, uh, let's call this, uh, let's just call this app code. Right, so if we look at uh, the message or the output, so here saying that to sign, use the browser to open this page and enter the code WL2. Uh, so this is the, so if we go back to the flow object and it's the same code as the uh, user code. I'm going to insert my user code and the code you enter has expired. Let me try again. Actually, I can just print the verification code. All right, so you seen that the code index expire. That's weird. Let me take a look. Okay, so this time it worked. I don't know what happened. Anyway, the page is going to prompt you to log into your account and sign into your account. It's going to ask you to grant permission to the app and click on yes. All right, so here we'll get a message. You are now signed to followed by the app name. And I can close this tab. And to create the access token, from the app object, we want to reference acquire token by device flow method. And we insert the flow object. 
and we'll name the output as result. And if I put in the result object in here's our access token that we need to provide to connect to the graph API. And the rest of the uh, steps is going to be the same as uh, method number one, which is going to be this. And it's going to be result. Oops, result access token. Now let me go ahead and uh, run this code block. Oh, uh, let's see, it is. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and uh, re-verify my account. And I'm going to enter my verification code and log into my account. And I'll acquire the access token. And I'll go ahead and generate my access token ID variable. And create my headers. Now I can go ahead and uh, make the request call. And if we look at the uh, JSON response, here's my profile submission. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to cover in this video. And I hope you guys found this video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.